Hi, I'm Al McGlashan for Club Marine TV. They reckon a boat is a hole in the water that you keep sinking your money into. Well, this could be true, and if you get a hole in that hole, well, it will sink straight to the bottom. It takes only one faulty hull fitting for your pride and joy to go down the gurgler, or a leaky hatch. Boats can sink scarily fast. Seawater weighs over a kilogram per litre, and it fills voids that normally provide reserve buoyancy. Even a frightened bloke with a bucket can't keep up. When this happens, your last line of defence is your bilge pump, which in many instances are mandatory. They can give you that extra time needed to fix the leak, reach safety, or prepare to abandon ship. A bilge pump is a friend indeed when your boat's in need. Nowadays, the most common types of marine bilge pumps are centrifugal and diaphragm. Centrifugal pumps use a spinning impeller to move water, whereas a diaphragm pump acts like bellows, pulling the water through an intake and then pushing it out. There is a lot of forums online about automatic versus manual bilge pumps and high water alarms. Talk to your installer, but I like to cover all bases. Redundancy is your friend. As to how much pumping capacity you should have, the answer differs according to size and type of boat. The American Bureau of Shipping recommends one 1,440 gallon per hour pump and one 720 gallon per hour pump for boats under 65 foot. That's equivalent to 8,100 litres an hour for those of you who think in metric. As a rule of thumb for smaller craft, I'd say boats less than 20 feet should have around 1,000 gallons per hour. 20 to 25 feet is around two and a half thousand gallons. 25 to 32 feet is 4,000 gallons. The maximum volumes claimed by pumps are ambitious in real world settings, so it's better to err on the side of safety. As an emergency backup, if your boat has an inboard engine, a neat trick is to have a three-way valve off your raw water intake, so you can select water from the bilge. That way, the engine pumps out the water. Bilge pumps should be wired directly to your battery or batteries, and they need to remain active after you shut down the battery switches. They need circuit protection, but be careful to use the right fuses. If the pump blocks, it can overheat and potentially catch fire. Now, any compartment that can hold water should have its own pump or two. Ideally, you should have one pump placed higher than the other for redundancy. The backup pump may never see service. To help prevent siphoning, the discharge hose should run above, then loop down to the through hole fitting. The hose can also have a vented loop to act as a siphon breaker. Float switches, which have a lever style floating arm, are what automate the pump system. They are not fail safe, so you should regularly test that the switch works. Also have a manual switch. The arm should be oriented fore and aft, not sideways, to prevent energising the switch as the hull rocks. Also, the hinge should be forward to stop surging bilge water from damaging the flapper when you accelerate onto the plane. Some bilges you can eat your breakfast off, whereas others have bits of fibreglass shaving, plastic fittings, and gooey, sludgy, oily mess. At the very least, make sure you can reach your pump and clear the strain of debris. The electrical connectors also have to be inspected for corrosion. Diaphragm pumps typically involve opening up the pump body, clearing the chamber of debris and checking the diaphragm and valves for deterioration. As I said, the bilge pump is your last line of defence and they're only as good as the power supply running to them and the skipper checking them.